because I think I'm the only one facing up to this thing because I am sure shit the only one dealing with it. Right, right. Because your grief is just so much more profound than mine. I is am that... fighting for my son! Our son! Our son! He's my boy too! Today, we have an excuse to review a TV show disguised as a special cross-platform treat. Rogue, DirecTV's foray into creating and distributing its own series, stars Tandy Newton as a dented yet determined mom locked in an organized crime underworld, and Martin Shokash as the kingpin who holds all of the keys. He'd like to think. But does Rogue cut into you like a juicy crime-slash-family-drama should? The short answer, at the risk of generalizing, is... Eh... Putting Tandy Newton in high heel boots and a leather jacket doesn't automatically make her a kick-ass badass, and neither does a script littered with F-bombs. So this isn't your typical basic cable. I get that. But the number of fucks she throws around and to people she supposedly loves, she almost automatically becomes unlikable because of faulty character development, and thus we lose our personal stakes in the drama unfolding. Martin Shokash further removes us, running his operation like it's a pirate ship, or like he's in 300, and tonight we dine in hell. Behind Newton and Shokash, there is a generally strong supporting cast that I just want to see play around more. But then there's Max, the crime boss, who, the crime boss's son, who just got out of prison in a pressed suit, who toys with the show's paradigm of alpha male. If there were a reason for me to revisit Rogue, it would be not only for Max's overall role in the story, but for Matthew Beard's tense and mature performance. For now, we've got a ship piloted by two dual roles that aren't really meshing for me. But I don't want to throw all of the faults of the show on its actor's shoulders. In a creator-driven medium, we turn to the creator, Matthew Parkhill. His hyper-CBS drama comes off as intimidating in its style, but lacking in its characters and story. Rogue tries to capture the Breaking Bad type audience while not utilizing radical focus structure. I find a refreshing quality in how Rogue challenges some gender roles, but to balance that out, I'm frustrated by its annoyingly conventional handle on things like the mother-daughter relationship and the hard-ass police chief. Why are these tropes even here? The short answer, again at the risk of generalizing, is that Matthew Parkhill's version of Oakland, California doesn't have a lot of meat on its bones. With a 10-episode order already under his belt and the proclamation that he and his writers have had the freedom to do more of what they want with this show because they know where it's going, I would expect less racy relations, sleeker pace, and more interesting story, which is, frankly, what the show lacks on the most general of scales. Interestingness. Definitely not lacking sex. There's a whole bunch of that. In the end, there is still a price of admission that comes with Rogue, that of a DirecTV membership. But since we're only in the early stages of a convoluted and, and uncertain storytelling environment where premium networks are forced to brand themselves in order to shepherd viewers, the question here appears not to be, is Rogue worth the price of admission, but rather, is this kind of show worth its monthly price of admission? Yeah, I'm actually ex pretty excited about this new forum of like uh, shows and storytelling, but with this script, I was kind of disappointed in the writing still. Especially since, like I said, the writers have talked about how they've had control, the 10 episode order is underway. I mean, it's just like Netflix with House of Cards. Yeah. But Netflix with House of Cards has things together. They have something that, to me, is original going on, and it's playful with its form. This, to me, I just felt like I was watching a CBS show that was put on, you know, premium cable. Exactly. And then you add in the fact of all the raciness. I mean, at times I felt like I was just kind of watching a porno. It was it was so shown. It was We you know. should probably, you know, tell our viewers that this is not like HBO style content no. in the way that it shows sex in like the Sopranos or anything like that. This is seriously, you'll watch an entire sexual encounter and it's yeah. very graphic in that nature. And you get kind of uncomfortable and you also feel like you're being lost in it too is you you know you don't really know what's you it know like the pulls point. you out of the purpose of the story exactly it's try I understand why it's trying to give dramatic tension and show us more about the characters in an uncensored way but, yeah and the same thing with the amount of f-bombs that are dropped it's like literally just because they have the ability to drop the yeah I feel like they could have reduced it a little bit and we still would have gotten the point and then of course on the uh, characters I find my, I found myself you know not liking the main character at all when you're setting up a show like this you have to have likable characters and and I know that we're trying to do the anti-hero thing here yeah. right but there's not a hero part to really any of them yeah I mean I, I understand it in Tandy Newton's character but 
I just, I'm not buying it. I don't care as much. You needed, and it's disappointing. Yeah, you needed something to really latch on to her, and mm -hmm. there, I just couldn't find anything. Mm -hmm. So, I mean, Rogue premieres Wednesday, April 3rd at 9 Eastern, 8 Central on DirecTV's Audience Network. So what kind of show would fit its way into your monthly cable bill? Tell us. Check us out on Facebook, where you can love us and like us. Follow us on Twitter at POA Reviews. And keep yourself tuned in to FrequencyTV.com and subscribe and like us on YouTube.